Praise the Lord. And right now, I want to introduce our speaker for today, Mr. Glenn Duncan. Maybe some of you don't know him. Glenn and Holly has been very faithful members in our church, and Glenn is the president of Southland Christian School. Come on, give Jesus a big hand. <laughs> And I'm, I'm so glad that uh, this man, the cu this couple, have been an example and has been, uh, they have been a blessing to our church. It is just, uh, I I'm proud to have you, Glenn. <laughs> Amen. Give Glenn a big welcome one more time. It's all yours. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. I don't just say this because it's a thing to say, but this church has been a tremendous blessing to us. I want you to know that. A lot of times you can take that for granted. A lot of times who we are and what we do on a daily basis that is really blessed of the Lord, you become so familiar with it, you can really take it for granted. But uh, I just want to tell you, you have blessed our lives. You have blessed our lives. Part of the leading of the Holy Spirit that he's led us all over the world in various places, but he led us right to this church and tucked us under a pastoral team here, and we're thankful for it. Hey, i got to share a little uh, blessing in my life. You know, 30 years ago, Tuesday, right, baby? 30 years ago, Tuesday, I married a young lady by the name of Holly Carol Harrington. She became Holly Carol Duncan 30 years ago. So Tuesday, yeah, baby, stand up. I want to honor you, my precious wife. Now, I know I'm prejudiced, young ones, and the ones who are single here, but if you end up with half the woman, or if you're a woman, if you end up with half the man, uh, you will be blessed. And I just want to honor my precious wife. Tuesday, we, have, we celebrate 30 years, and uh, God has blessed us with a trip. Uh, this time next week, we'll be preaching at our church in Australia. We, uh, we were married one year, and in 1987, we were married in 86, and 87 to 91, we moved to Melbourne, Australia. I was in business. And God tucked us under a pastor and his, and his wife there, and we get a chance. Now, they're with the Lord now, but their family's leading the church, so we get a chance to be down there, and pastors warn me, don't, to, don't preach on your vacation, but they just want us to share. So we're going to just share with them, and uh, we, you know, it's kind of that, that kind of family atmosphere where you could just share and you could talk for hours, but uh, it's a really precious time. So, and also, I got to also acknowledge my, my assistant at Southlands. Yes, Miss Shelly Funes, would you stand up, Shelly? This is my assistant at the school. And her wonderful husband, George, next to her. Shelly keeps me straight. She, uh, she takes care of my life and organizes me, and I thank God for her. I want to talk to you. You know, the last couple of months, pastors talked about the Holy Spirit. Months ago, he told us he wanted to introduce us to the Holy Spirit. And it wasn't just something, as I recall, that you said you wanted to do. It's something that the Lord led you. I want you to introduce the Holy Spirit to the congregation. And I just want to come alongside that, and I want to body build with you this morning. Because there is God the Father, there's God the Son, and then there is God the Holy Spirit. He's not an it. He's not an it. He is the one that is teaching you. He is the one that guides us. He is the one that gives us revelation. He is the one that inspired the ones who wrote the Bible that we read. He is the one that it, Jesus said, it's important that I go because if I don't go, he won't come. So it's vital that he came and so much so that Jesus said, it's important that I go. I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit today. I had a conversation this week. It was in my office. It was part of a regular meeting that I have every couple of weeks with a certain employee. And we often, we often on uh, meetings that I have, we begin in prayer. Because God, I, I really know that our school only exists to bring glory to God, and we only exist because God's hand is upon us. So we acknowledge him in all of our ways. So I had this conversation, and this uh, person said, I have been asking God for more words for people. And it's interesting, I, you know, usually I could have just let that go, but something rose up inside of me, and I came forth and I said, you know what, the words are already in you, simply release them. That's what I felt in the spirit man, so I just released it. I said, the words are already in you, simply release them. And when I said that, and when you know when you hit the bullseye, all of a sudden the presence of God came in the office. 
And we both manifested in the presence of God. We both just basically began to worship him and thank him for who he is. There are times in your life when God shows up. Don't fill it with chatter. Either fill it with silence and awe before him. Or together, don't be afraid to worship the one who is the only one. Who is like him? We're singing this morning, but let's really get down to it. Who is like our God? Is there anyone who is like our God? So this precious, precious person and part of our staff is wanting more words and just saying, it's in you. The spirit, the same spirit. The Bible says, if the same spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. Now, what is the answer to that question? Is that really an if, Pastor Tom? He does dwell in us, doesn't he? The same spirit. I want you to think about this. Now, listen to me. I don't want you to allow the enemy to put you in a little box right now. I don't want him to allow you to be some hierarchy. It's pastor It's this, it's this, and somewhere down the line I'm here, no, 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 no. He leads us in the ways of the Lord, but we have an individual relationship with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now, the enemy will convince you, and he had her convinced, if you're, and and here's the thing, she was asking God something for something that was already in her. She simply needed to release them. I practice that in the mornings. I always greet people. I want a culture of greeting in our, in our school. I want a culture of love and friendliness on our campus. I don't think Disneyland should be the friendliest place on the earth. It should be a place that honors Jesus Christ and says, God, let your presence be here. You're not, you can be because God can heal anywhere, but I want a tsunami of love and peace and joy and a tsunami of healing on our campus. It should be the greatest place. But I often practice... In my greeting, just by faith, stepping out and speaking things over people. And before you're going to carry a 30-pound message to someone prophetically, you've got to learn to carry the one and two pounders. I don't stop them and say, thus saith the Lord, and they don't fall out into the ground. That, you know, they can do that, but it's, it's a simple word. And one morning I said, don't believe the lies of the enemy. I just felt that in my spirit, man, and I said this to one of the uh, staff members. Do not believe the lies of the enemy. You know, two weeks later, that person came back to me and said, how did you know to say that? I was really going through something. You see, it was within me. The word was there. I simply needed to release the word. If you hear anything I've heard today, and if I could repeat anything 150 times or however long my time would permit, it would be this. We need to learn how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. We need to. You need to. You need to. I need to. More and more. Need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. He is the spirit of truth. He is our guide. I want to, and, and, and even in saying that, I could really get to the fountainhead, and I could pray for more words, more power, more this, more that, or I can pray at the fountainhead of a prayer. God, I want to learn how to cooperate more with your Holy Spirit. And I'm going to share scripture with you that's going to back up. I just, want to, I just want a tsunami of the word to come over us. You see, in my life, in the 30 years of us being married, all I really know is following the Lord. And I'm not a poster child for this, and I'm not saying that braggadociously. I say it really humbly because I don't have any other plan. I cannot conceive, and I fear God so much, and I fear doing it myself too much, not to, desire so much to hear the Lord and to simply obey that which where the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding us. Before the Holy Spirit led us and and spoke to us about coming to California, we had just bought a home in Gig Harbor, Washington. Before that, we lived in New York. Before that, we lived in Washington, D.C. Before that, we lived in Melbourne, Australia. Before that, one more year in in Washington, D.C. So we've been around Now, it was not convenient for us to leave Gig Harbor. We had just bought a new home, and homes up there were $225,000 when they were $700,000 or a million dollars for the same home down here. 
But God doesn't ask for his words to be convenient in my life. He simply asks for our obedience. Because I'm telling you, if you will obey, in the long run, you'll look back and you'll say, thank God I obeyed you, Father. Thank God. When I was 22 years old, I was in management with a multi-billion dollar corporation at Giant Food in Washington, D.C., actually in Landover, Maryland. We, we were many, many, many stores. My vision for my life was to become the president of Washington, D.C., of, of Giant Food. That was my big goal, president of Washington, D.C. <laughs> That's coming later in life. <laughs> dog. <laughs> I wanted to be the president of Giant Food. Why? Because that was right in front of me, and it was the thing I could see with my own eyes. But instead, God led an Australian businessman across my pathway from Melbourne, Australia, shaking my hand, offering me a job three times during a plant tour. A year later, we're down in Melbourne, Australia, where I'm 27 years old. I came back when we were 31 years old. I was 31, yes. My wife was 21. She's still 21. Do you know in hindsight, Giant Food was sold to a huge corporation that swallowed it up. Even though it was a big multi-billion, it was swallowed up by a multi-multi-multi-billion. I would have simply laid my life down for something that wasn't really, nothing evil. There has to be a president of giant food, and God bless the person, the man or woman who's called to that, but we were not called to that. So we go down to Melbourne, Australia. Then God leads us back to Washington, D.C. Then in a Kairos moment of the Lord, we meet a gentleman. We come up to New York to be a part of their ministry for a year. Then I meet a man at a conference, and I told my wife, I'd like a man like that to mentor me one day. That man, we cross, we crisscross at the men's bathroom. We ended up, he ended up getting my name and number. The next thing you know, we're in, in Gig Harbor, Washington for four years. And then we're there for four years in Gig Harbor, Washington. And yeah, I, won't, I can't I don't have time to go into how that happened, but it's, God spoke along the way. And then we come down here. We turned the job down three times here to come toward this school. We were told, come be an elder at the church, and as a part-time job, you can run the school. Well, how many know it's not a part-time job running a school? <laughs> Maybe that's why I had to come down here. They were running it on a part-time basis. I don't know. But all I'm saying is this. You will never ever, ever be disappointed by obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit because the word of God declares that he tells you of things to come. Where does he get it? He says he takes of what is mine, this is Jesus talking, and he declares it to you. He discloses to you. He uncovers it for you. You don't know. The Bible says that a man's way is not in himself, nor is it in a man who walks to direct his own steps. In Jeremiah, check it out. That's why God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your pathways. Your knowledge is limited, but there is a God by his Holy Spirit that is all-knowing. He knows yesterday, today, and forevermore. He knows why you were even put in your mother's womb. He knows those fashioned days for you that are spoken of in Psalms. He knows those days that are crafted just for you. And the Holy Spirit loves us so much. God loves us so much. He wants to talk to us. Some of you might check out and say, I don't hear from God. Let me tell you something. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God speaks to his children. If you're not his child here this morning and you haven't asked Jesus Christ into your life, you can settle that today. You can actually settle it in your seat right now. Ask him into your heart, just like the band member of Led Zeppelin did. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good and not for evil, plans to give you a future and a hope. How are you going to find those out? By getting in the word, praying, fasting, and hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. When I got to Southlands Christian School, it had been 12 years ago, I walked out of my office one day. I was just going downstairs like this, going to the parking lot. And the Spirit of God spoke to me and told me about the preschool director at the time, said she wasn't going to be here for that much longer. How many know it's a lot, it's a lot more effective in business? Because this is practical stuff I'm talking about. The Holy Spirit, God is very practical. 
You're a minister as a doctor, a lawyer, a, a businessman in the stock market, a developer, a nurse, whatever. That is, your, that is your rule. That's your sphere. If you're a karate expert, if you're whatever you do, whatever you do, whatever you do, you're in the CIA. You can't tell me anyway. I don't want to know anyway, okay? <laughs> but I will tell you this. God is very practical. And God knows you exactly what you're about. And he wants to speak to you about you and about what he's called you to do and to be. God wants to hang out with us. He wants to enjoy us. He wants to, us to enjoy him. God told me, hey, I told our principal, this was probably 10 years ago, you're going international. So we, we prepared to go international. You have Cindy Jacobs prophesying over us in 2012, I believe it was, 12, 13. There's an international anointing upon your school. She had recognized something that the Holy Spirit had told me years and years and years ago. I want to, I'm just going to declare it again. The enemy is a liar. I've, I've said it oftentimes. My father said it to me. Watch out for your stinking thinking, Glenn. He warned me about stinking thinking. He warned me about lid thoughts. Now, the youth of today, where's your hope coming from? Your hope needs to come from the Lord. Who do you hope in? Hope in the Lord. Oh, he's distant. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit's your helper. You're come alongside. Your comforter. Your counselor. When's the last time you had a counselor that was 50 miles away? They can't do it or 150 or thousands of miles away. The counselor, a counselor is near you. He is referred to in one of his aspects as the counselor. I can't tell you how many times I've been on my motorcycle and I have times with the Lord. I was thinking about it, preparing. I've had times of chewing the word of God up on my motorcycle. Now, some of you are saying, oh, motorcycle. It's the safest vehicle to be on when you just say, Lord, cover this bike under the blood of the lamb. And I just roar, sit back and I roar. Amen? I just love every second of it. And I take the turns off for the glory of God. And I can sense his pleasure. And it's a Honda. So you got that right, hey? You know what I'm talking about, George. Nothing like a Honda. If you're a farmer, it's like a John Deere. Right? But you chew the word of God up. You chew it up. You dissect it. And the Holy Spirit, who inspired the word, is the teacher of the word to you. And he begins to break it down to you, one piece at a time. And you chew and you meditate on it. That word goes in you and wow, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Father. You are blind spiritually without the Holy Spirit's guidance. You're as blind as a bat. You're as blind as a bat. Why do you think the enemy fights the infilling of the Holy Spirit through the body of Christ worldwide? anti this. I'm anti tongues. I'm anti. Well, are you anti revelation? Are you anti wisdom? Are you anti knowledge? Are you anti understanding? Are you anti guiding? Do you, are you anti sight? Yeah. And he wants to get in your stuff. And some of you came here just for a church service because that's what you do on a Sunday. But I'm not up here, nor is pastor, nor anybody comes up here. We're not in just, just church services. They can be as dead as a doornail. You can check your list and you can feel good about yourself, but you can walk out just as blind as you came in. I'm talking about you, and I wish I knew every one of your names and I could take the time to call you. I'm talking about you being loved by Father God and Jesus, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to hang on the cross. And this Jesus lived for 30 years and had a dynamic ministry for three years. And this same Jesus who raised the dead, did all these incredible things, said, it's important that I go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit won't come. That's a huge one to wrap your brain around. And the disciples even wrestled with it. What do you mean it's important that you go? You're the star. We've never seen anything like this. People love you, your love. We, we crack on the kids and you rebuke us and say, bring the kids to me. You talk to a woman at the well and you totally set her free. You read her mail. She goes into the town. They come out. They get evangelized and born again. When we walk with you, our hearts burn within us and you've got to go. Think about it. 
Think about something that, you, that is very successful. And you, you, we tend to look at the, the one person, we all pin it, but it's a really a team. But you look at, think about that. And you've got to go? Well, if I don't go, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit won't come. And when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. We take, we take an oath. I, I swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. If I don't go, I, he says this, Jesus said, I have many things to say to you that you can't bear now. You can't take it right now. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he'll guide you into all truth. For he won't speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you of things to come. It is a woo, isn't it, Pastor? It is. You can't live without the leading of the Holy Spirit. All you have is religion. That's all you have at best. All you have at best is some big old honking thing on your back trying to be something that you can't be because you're as blind as a bat. All you do is open up the Word of God instead of saying, Holy Spirit, you inspired this. Please inspire it to my brain. You'll just be reading words and you might as well be reading a novel. But when he makes it come alive, then life within you. Why? Because the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells within you. And he will quicken your mortal body. Amen? And yes, he'll quicken it on that day when we die. We go right from me. We pass on. But he also brings Zoe life in the meantime. Please get that. Don't settle for mere religion. Where you've got stinking thinking, have, it, have the courage to ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, because I've asked the Holy Spirit, even lately, I ask him about our school. I say, Father, by your Holy Spirit, would you guide us? What, what are we doing currently that grieves you? What's going on on this campus that grieves you? And some things we don't know about. It might be somebody doing this or a student doing that or something. And sure, sure enough, these things will come to light. Why? Because there's nothing hidden that will not be revealed. But ask, the, ask God. We don't pray to the Holy Spirit, but by his Holy Spirit, he guides us. Father God, where in my life is there stinking thinking? Where in my life am I living less than what you have for me? Because I'm simply just believing a lie. I'm thinking only Pastor Paul hears from God. Occasionally, one of the, the other board members or deacons or, or somebody, oh, sure, surely the, the, the worship leader, they're, they've got a conduit to the Lord. You know what? You have a conduit from, to the Lord if you want one. And on your job, driving around, driving your truck, driving whatever. I'm driving my motorcycle, whatever. God's speaking to us. We need to learn to cooperate. You know, a lot of people pay a lot of money for life coaches. It's a big thing now, isn't it? Got a life coach? Pastor Tom, you got a life coach? It's kind of, it's the vogue thing. I got a life coach. Well, what's that life coach do? You call them up usually because they, they, they're worldwide or you Skype them. They want, to be, they want to be all over the place and they're trained. Don't just do your local. Spread it out. Get on Skype. Do this, do that. There's probably 15 other things after Skype and I'm probably showing my age with just Skype, but hey, get them out. Get your life coach. Let me tell you something. There's no better life coach than the Holy Spirit. <laughs> you want a life coach? You want a life coach? Because that life coach doesn't really know the purpose that God put me on this earth. Now, they can give me the standard things because usually they've got a standard book here, and you are here, and they just always they bring everybody to this point. But the Holy Spirit knows what makes you tick. The Holy Spirit knows how you're wired. The Holy Spirit knows how you best respond. Some of the most quiet people in this church that you'll never hear about are the greatest prayer warriors. They pray. Seek God. Holy Spirit knows that. You don't have to be loud and boisterous like me. Oh, yeah, he's got, no, no, no. Same Holy Spirit. And God does not give the Spirit of God with measure. He don't, you don't get half a Holy Spirit. Now, subsequent to your salvation, there is an act of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, and you receive the Holy Spirit exactly by faith, and there is a speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance, and your heavenly prayer language, which is a whole other subject that I won't get on today, I'll just touch briefly, but that is a reality. Why? Because it's in this Word. It's not a denominational uh, sermon. It is the Word of God. 
Okay, there is a heavenly language. I pray more in the Holy Spirit than I do in English, to be honest with you. I don't know what I would do if I did not have the Holy Spirit praying through me. Why? Because the Bible says he prays according to the perfect will of the Father. Because the Bible says we do not know how to pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us. And he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You got Jesus making constant intercession for you. You got the Holy Spirit just waiting and listening. And then you got him conveying those thoughts and those impressions and those divine nuggets of truth and revelation to you. So he's the greatest life coach. You look at uh, Luke 4.1, it says this, because Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. He was full. He walked in the Spirit. He was filled. He was obedient to the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit. All of that. I love Luke 4, 1. It's in the Amplified. Can you get it? Then Jesus, look at that, full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Stop right there. That's, that's really, at the end of the day, one sentence. We are to be full of, you ever been told you're full of it? Okay. Full of the Holy Spirit, like they say, walking in the fog, the favor of God, right? We're walking in the fog. He was full of and controlled by the Holy Spirit. He returned from the Jordan and was led by the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of and controlled by. And let me tell you something. That's not weird. It's not weird. It's not weird. You, it, don't, don't, if it's weird, it's because that person or you have made it weird. If I'm weird, I made myself weird because God is not weird. You know why? Because God is love. And anything that he does through me, if it's in a foundation of love, it's going to be received because every one of our walls come down when we know we're loved. You can prophesy over me if you're arrogant and you're this and you're that. It's going to come out like lead bricks over me, right? Whatever. But if you love me, it's even true when you pray for somebody and they love you. and they, it, it really, There's no blockage. And that's why it won't be weird because the foundation of it will be in love. That's what the world needs. You know, a lot of you... And I'll talk, we, we were recently in a conference, and this, this gentleman was talking about how he, uh, was to, he used to go to the down and outers. I'll make it short because it was very long with he, he, when he gave it because it was, it was exciting. But he used to go to the down and outers, to the villages way, way, way out. He said the greatest miracles would happen way out in the villages where they had nothing. But one day God said, I want to send you not to the down and outers. I want to send you to the up and outers. He said, Lord, it's almost like Peter said, surely, Lord, you know, we won't do this. And nothing other clean has ever touched my lips. He kind of balked it a little bit, but then, then he obeyed God. And God sent him to a mayor in a, in a country of Peru, I believe it was. And I won't get into all the details, but all this man had. Now, I'm talking about obedience, because here's the thing, folks. Our miracle, the outbreak of what God really wants to do in our life, is over that hill called faith and called taking a first step and called risk. Seldom do I pray, sit, and something just manifests wherever I'm praying. I have to get up. I have to have faith. I have to take the steps to put myself in a position where God needs to show up. The flesh does everything it can do to try to get away from the flesh, from the spirit having to do something. I've often marveled at people who travel and they said, God told me to go to a place and they went by faith. They stood either in the airport or waiting for the ship and, and then all of a sudden provision would come right then and there. That's faith. That's risk. Because you can look real stupid taking your suitcase back and you, you didn't have it. That's faith. So this gentleman went and all he had in his heart he didn't have anything when he first went there. And then he has an audience with the mayor. God worked that out. He's sitting there, and he's, this mayor's talking. And the, we, they, the America had cracked down on the, the cocaine business in, the, in Peru. And it was, the, the Americans were hated because even though it was evil, it was, it, was, it was illegal, it was the source of their revenue. Okay? It's just like that. It reminds me of that, that story in the Bible where that woman that would uh, prophesy and brought much money to the local merchants, when Paul cast the demon out of her, she could no longer do it. They were mad at him because that was their livelihood. But this was like the cocaine, and they were mad at Americans. So he's sitting in front of this mayor, and the town, the city is desolate. 
It has been ravaged with poverty. Spirit of poverty just rampant through the place. And he's sitting there and he's saying, okay, God, I obeyed. You said go to the up and outers. I'm here sitting in front of this man. And then all of a sudden, God said, tell him I'm going to help him. Now get this, folks. This, not, this man he went to prophesy to was not a born-again Christian. When Joseph went to Pharaoh, Pharaoh was not a born-again believer. Don't look for church people to, all the time. Now, we need it too, but don't go looking for people who believe in God to prophesy to. They often don't know God, but God loves them too. And let me say this as well. When I share with that young lady, just out of my spirit, don't believe the lies of the enemy, every single one of us in this room would believe, now don't believe the lies of the enemy. And we may even take it for granted, right? But let me just say this. What you have in your heart already, don't assume that they already know it out there in a lost and dying world. This world is hurting big time. This world, the average person doesn't believe, most of them, a lot of them don't even believe there is a God, let alone that God loves them. Please don't discount what the Holy Spirit wants to do through you because it's part of your church jargon or you've heard it a hundred times. When the Holy Spirit says to say it, say it. So he tells this man, God's, God's going to help you. And as soon as he said God's going to help him, and he brought out the point, it's like you've got to prime the pump. Things began to flow out of his spirit man. And he began to prophesy over this mayor. And he, said, God's going, he says God's going to bring you a, a, an attraction, a, a, an amusement. And the people are going to come from all over the world to be a part of this amusement. You're going to discover gold in this city. You know the one I'm talking about? The gold in this city. And then he, he, uh, be a, a financial breadbasket for this, for this country. This was all because a man simply went to the up and outers, went by faith to sit in front of the mayor with nothing. The Holy, God by his Holy Spirit gave him what to say. He said that, and then a gusher flowed from that. The gushers don't come until the, the, the other steps. We love the steps where he was prophesying and the anointing was on him, but it was a lot of shaking and trembling and fear of the Lord and a really putting yourself in a position to really look foolish. And every single thing he prophesied took place in that town. He ended up in the, this is a number of things in the story, but he ended up being put on television countrywide. He was able to speak to the entire country. Then he said, hey, when you reach the up and outers, you can sure reach a whole lot of people more than just going one village to the next. He still did the village thing, but God sent him into that. And then Bill Clinton, when he was president in the UN, when he was saying how the the world is under economic depression, he stopped and, and said, except for this, and he mentioned that town in Peru that was experiencing financial abundance. That's what God can do. That's what God can do. God forbid you come Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and don't believe God can do something like that in you. Oh, we need to, we need to take, we need to shred off this uh, lid thinking and we need to stop believing the lies of the enemy. Some of you need to stop hanging around people that do nothing but reinforce the lies of the enemy in your life. Your friends are like elevators on a button. They'll take you up or they'll take you down. Who you're hanging with will decide what kind of world, really, your environment is absolutely vital. I don't know, just throw that in for extra. I won't charge you a dime for that one. Just came in like a torpedo. No, it does. Came like a torpedo. Amen? Some of you hang with lids. And that's not that God doesn't love lids, but you're called, you can't rise above it. You're hanging in horse manure. You're going to smell like horse manure. I know that's really vile. Hang around, let's do it. You hang around a dumpster. What are you going to smell like? Roses? No, you're going to smell like a dumpster. Some of you, like, people will just take you on like a dumpster and they just feed this. This lid thinking, this lid thing is, some of it's even Christians. Some of it's your family. You got to break out of it. That's why I say, get before the Lord. Get before the Lord. Simplify it. Say, God, is there stinking thinking in my life? Where am I believing a lie? Cut me loose. Cut me me loose. Here's another, here's a very difficult prayer. You'll need a Greek lexicon for this one. Ask him to fix you. Two words, fix me. Every single one of us in this room, if we were honest with ourselves, would have at least one area in our lives we need to tell Lord, fix me. 
And we do a lot to cover that up, and sometimes it'll appear to the natural man like it's your strength, but it's really a weakness because you spend your time trying to cover it up. Fix me, God. Nobody knows how to fix me like the Holy Spirit. John 16 says, I still have many things, and it says this, I still have many things to say to you, but you are not able to bear them now or to take them upon yourself or grasp them, okay? It talks about the Holy Spirit um, that you, he will testify of the Lord. Think about that, this for a minute. The Holy Spirit magnifies Jesus. He magnifies Jesus. He testifies of Jesus. Okay, what did Jesus do when he was here? This, isn't a, this is not a trick quiz. And what did he do when he here? Did he heal? Okay, he loved people. He multiplied food. He, he fasted, he prayed, he honored his father. If the Holy Spirit's going to testify of Jesus, who is he going to use to do it through? Us. He can do it any way he wants. God could make a complete plasma screen of all plasma screens or whatever, what's the latest technology? LED, whatever, nuclear stuff that isn't even on the market yet. And you know, you're on a highway and it's the brightest of days and you can still see like it's vibrant, the colors. God could do that in the sky. He could. He could do it. He could do it. And everything could play exactly what he says, but he wants to use us. When I lay hands on the sick and I see them recover, that's the Holy Spirit bearing testimony to Jesus Christ and his work on the cross. It's really got nothing to do to me except for my obedience and my faith and belief in it. When you prophesy, it's got nothing to do with you. Please don't put on your resume, I prophesy. Right next to, I'm also humble, right? Yeah. I'm humble, but look at all these things I do. It's the Holy Spirit bearing, he's testifying. When I go to court and I testify, I'm giving my account of a situation. If I'm asking questions, I'm, I'm giving testimony as to what happened through my eyes. As the disciples said, we can only give you what we've seen and what we've heard. When, when Peter and John were called in front of the, the, the Sadducees and the chief commanders, and a man who had 40 years, he was 40 years young, he, he, he was healed, and they brought him in there, and they said, they threatened him, don't you dare teach in this name. And then they brought him back and threatened him some more. And Peter said, hey, whether it's right before God for us to obey you or obey him, you judge that. We can only tell you what we've seen and what we've heard, okay? Now, follow me on this. If we could not quote that scripture today, then that means they had an advantage that we did not have. Then why would the Great Commission be in there? Why would Jesus say, you're going to do greater things because I go to my Father? They had no advantage. Now, let's just, let's get something really straight too, though. I would have loved to walk with Jesus for three years and seen it face to face. I wouldn't be here now to talk about it with you. Right? Thanks, dear, for getting that one. But you should be able to say, I don't repeat anything I don't see or hear. Jesus was voice activated. He says, I don't, he, Jesus said the same thing. I don't first do, I don't do anything that I first don't hear the father say. I don't speak anything I first don't hear my father say or see my father do. That means when you call that little boy out of the coffin, when the mother, the, the widow within her only child's dead and you call, you stop the procession and you, and you raise the dead right there and then that little boy, that means that somewhere he either heard the father's voice telling him to do that or he saw it already, but he did it. And let me just ask you this. If you're going to do nothing in this world but what you've, also, you've already heard or seen, who's going to reveal that to you? Now, I'm not getting spooky with you. I'm simply, because we've heard testimonies. We hear testimonies from this very pulpit of hearing and doing. Pastor, you've told me many 
in business situations where God gave you wisdom and you simply repeated that which you've heard. Where are you going to hear it? You're going to hear it through his word, the written word, which is the, the, which is the word and Jesus living is there's the same thing. He's the word made flesh. You're going to get it from the word and you're going to hear it from the Holy Spirit. And I've heard some really incredible things that the Holy Spirit has spoken to people to say, but the persons that they said them to knew exactly what it meant, and it set them free in so many ways. Why? Because God knows everything. He knows everything. Let me speak some truth over you, which I've been doing. Let me just speak it again, okay? And I just want to remind you, because Pastor brought this out a couple of months ago, and he just listed it. He listed the, he, the Holy Spirit's known as the counselor, the helper. Let this just minister to you. The Holy Spirit is your counselor. I know there's people hearing my voice right now. You just wish this week, you may have even said it out loud, I wish I had someone to talk to about this problem. And if you're a man, and sometimes we have relationships, and you might have one or two close friends, you don't have many, or you might find it hard to have close friends, because, you know, whatever you, and you say, man, I wish I had someone to talk to. I just want to tell you, God loves you. His Holy Spirit is there, same Spirit raised Christ that is within you. He's your counselor. That doesn't mean, the Bible says there's safety in many counselors, but you know what? He's always there. He never leaves me. He never forsakes me. When I ever feel like he's left me, it's usually because I've left him, and I've got 15 reasons why he should have left me. He hasn't, but I'm putting it in my own stinking thinking. This is why you shouldn't do this, because I didn't do this, 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 this. You know what? Even with that, he's there. Why? Because he never leaves. When is someone gone if they never leave? He's the counselor. He's the helper. Oh, I need some help in this situation. When my mom cried out to, I shared that testimony. When my mom cried out, my father had Alzheimer's the last 10 years of his life, and she cried out. He had a cancerous growth on the side of his face, and she was distressing out about getting him to the hospital and doing all these things because she already did so much for so many years. And my father, who hadn't spoken for five or six years, all of a sudden with a strong voice, she just said, Lord, help me. She says, Glenn's not here. He's in California doing what you've called him to do. I need your help. She called out to the helper. And a man who hadn't spoken years with a strong voice said, I am. Two words he spoke, I am. I'd never heard my father speak I am in my life. God was speaking through him to a precious woman who said, I need help. It wasn't shortly thereafter she called the nurse. They did a house visit. They did a house operation. Didn't even have to take him out. God took care of her. Why? She needed a helper and she cried out. You need a helper, you got one. You need a lying friend, you don't have a friend. You, need a, you want to go to a liar, the devil, you got one. No, I'm serious now. He is a liar. If, I, if a habitual liar came in here and said, someone's coming in here, they can't even tell the truth, and we gave them the mic, would you believe anything they say? No. But we, it's so craftily sometimes, he'll, he'll, he'll convince you that you're this when we're really child of the king of all kings. We are, yes, yes. Yes, amen. You are the child of who we sing about every Sunday. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. It's getting this mind renewed and getting this stinking thinking out and the word in and letting the Holy Spirit guide you, help you, counsel you. He is your advocate. He's your intercessor. I love this. He's your strengthener. Oh, I just need, I, I, don't, I don't know if I'm going to make it, just the strength. I just need more strength. He's there. Remember that difficult prayer, fix me. Some of you really need to get that, fix me. And then lastly, he's, he's, the, he's your standby. He's your standby. I want to finish with this. And this goes along with what, i got a whole lot more to say, but God willing. You know, I'll be preaching, and like I said, I'll, I'll finish the rest in Australia next week, and I'll send you the tape. No. How many here besides me qualifies an ordinary person? Is there any, now, you don't want, maybe want people to know this, but my, I'll just speak for myself. I, I'm not part of a kingdom, except the kingdom of God. My, my, I didn't grow up in a palace. 
There's nothing in America. I'm not part of the, the, uh, the Rothschilds or, the, or any of that great. I'm just an ordinary person. And for the most part, unless we don't know, we're, we're really a bunch of ordinary people who believe in an extraordinary God to do incredible things through us. I just want to sh- finish with this verse, and I do mean finish with this verse. It's, it's in, um, where is it? The da-da-da-da-da, uh, ordinary people. It's Acts 4, 13. Acts 4, 13. You guys are quick. Man, you're almost like the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now, when they start popping them up there before I say them, you know he got filled. Amen? Now, when they saw the boldness and the unfettered eloquence, the Amplified Bible says that when they saw the uh, boldness, okay, never mind, unfettered eloquence of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and untrained in the schools, common men with no educational advantages, they marveled and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. This is one of my favorite verses in the entire Bible. Now, that doesn't mean that nobody here has a degree, but that means we come to the Lord humbly and saying, greater are you that's in me than he that's in the world. It no longer, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. It's, uh, it's recognition that a man's way is not in himself, nor is it in a man who walks to direct his own steps. But I'm declaring to you today, just as God Just as I met Holly Carol Harrington in Washington, D.C., and we got married, the same Holy Spirit led us to Australia, led us back to D.C., led us up to New York, led us down over to Washington, Gig Harbor, led us down to California, and has tucked us in. That same has has taken ordinary people, put them together in a family of ordinary people to do an absolutely extraordinary thing. God is going to do an extraordinary thing in California. It's the lid is about to burst open. I'm not just speaking hype. I'm not just speaking manana, manana. And who is he going to use? Ordinary people just like us who are able and willing to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you. I thank you for an incredible family. What an incredible family. Holy Spirit, it's it's very interesting talking about you, and you're right here. You're right here. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And Holy Spirit, you desire to magnify Jesus. So, Father, I pray for each and every one of us. I pray that someone, everyone, everyone in this room got something of truth today. And that truth will set them free. I pray, Father God, that all of us have less religion in us today and more of a desire for a relationship with you. Holy Spirit, would you magnify Jesus in our lives? Would you change our prayer lives? Would you open us up to the truth? Would you give us such wisdom? Would you fill us to overflowing? And Father, prepare us for that which is to come. We hear your voice. We know we are in the kingdom for such a time as this. We're modern day Esthers. And for such a time as this. Father, I pray that each one of us will believe and listen to the enemy a whole lot less after today. I pray a recognition of the lies of the enemy. I pray for soul wounds of people in this house that need to be healed. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, magnify Jesus. Jesus, you are the healer. You are the healer. You are Jehovah Rapha. Let your healing touch be made real in this house. Now, I'm going to close in prayer because we're over except for this. And I mean this from the bottom of my heart. And I'm often amazed. I'm amazed at the quality of ministry we have in this house. And I can't think of a place I'd rather be when I need an answer from the Lord to agree with men and women of God in this house who are faith people and they know God. But I just want to encourage you. I'm going to close in prayer. But if you have 
If you don't know Jesus, I want to encourage you and just say, you can today, come up and we will pray with you to receive Jesus. If you have cancer in your body, you have, you have something in your body, if you have a, 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 a crick in your neck, if you have anything that you want anyone to agree in prayer and touch and see God touch you and heal you, then don't run out of here. Get prayer. Let the helper help you and let him testify of Jesus, the healer, in your physical body. And if there's any confusion on your mind, if there's torment on your mind, you need to be delivered, then you need to come on up front after this. And everyone's going, it's okay. I'm going to come, and I'm going to let the Lord, by his Holy Spirit, minister to me. I just want to let you know that that happens every time we meet here. And you're here, and God loves you, and he cares about you. You're, the lie that no one cares for you is just that. It's a lie. God cares for you. He cares about you. You're here today for such a time as this. Not just because I'm speaking, it's because who he is. So Father, bless us, empower us, protect us, give us an outrageously uh, great week of your presence. Bless our marriages. Bless our families. Bless our jobs. Let promotions flow. Bless our giving. Bless the prophetic in our lives. Let us release the words of the prophetic. And let us live a week that we can say, that's a godly week because I didn't do it in my own strength, but I did it in God's strength. We pray all of this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you one of those people I talked about, come on up front. We'll anoint you with oil. We'll pray for you. Anybody else that has to leave, God bless you as you go. Have an incredible week. Bless you.